Um, thanks so much. Uh, so I just first wanted to thank the organizers for um, having me uh, here today and um, for putting together this uh, very nice workshop. Um, so yes, I'm going to talk today about facets of spherical random polytopes in high dimensions. Uh, this is joint work with uh, Gilles Bonnet from Fulham. So um, by spherical random polytopes, we, um, we mean the model where we take uh, points x1 through xn to be n independent random vectors uh, that are uniformly distributed on the unit sphere um, in RD. Um, we can, and we consider the polytope that is uh, obtained by taking the convex hull of these random vectors and denoted by P and comma D. Um, we'll assume that N is greater than or equal to D plus one. Um, so we obtain a full dimensional polytope. Um, and uh, I have some uh, pictures here in, in two and three dimensions. Um, but the general question that we um, consider in this, uh, in this work is what this polytype looks like in high dimensional space. Um, so as alluded to in the title, we'll, we'll um, tackle this question by looking at the facets or D minus one dimensional faces of the polytope. And we will consider their um, asymptotic behavior as D tends to infinity. Um, a common motivation for studying random polytopes is approximation of convex sets. Um, because in many instances, random constructions obtain near optimal approximation rates for polytope approximation. And so uh, a particular question we will also focus on um, is how well this polytope approximates the unit ball um, in RD as D tends to infinity. Um, another specific question will be the number of facets. Um, so how does, for example, the expected number of facets grow as we let dimension go to infinity? So as I mentioned, to understand the high dimensional behavior of this polytope, um, we're going to study its facets, which are D minus one dimensional simplices almost surely. Um, they have the convex hall of the D tuple of random vectors. And um, for a facet of this polytope with supporting hyperplane curly H, um, this hyperplane is parametrized by its unit normal and sign distance to the origin this distance h, um, we call the height of the facet. It's positive if the polytope and the origin are on the same side of the supporting hyperplane, and it'll be negative if they are on different sides. Um, so in particular, the origin will be in the interior of the polytope if all facet heights are positive. And so here we have um, a nice picture um, showing the, the, the two cases where we have a positive um, facet height or a negative uh, facet height. So next we define the typical height, which is the height of a typical facet of our polytope. Its distribution is given by the height of the convex hull of a D tuple X1 through XD of IID uniform random vectors on the unit sphere, conditioned on this convex hull being a facet of uh, our random polytope. But even more than a typical height, we want to understand the behavior of all the facets. And so we consider um, this interval contained in the interval from zero to one that contains the heights of all of the facets of our random polytope bounded by the random variables H min, which is the minimum facet height, and H max, which is the maximum facet height. Um, so if we can understand the asymptotic behavior of this interval, this will lead to um, the asymptotic behavior of um, the uh, quantities I mentioned at the beginning. First, um, an approximation of the unit ball with respect to the Hausdorff distance, because this is just one minus the minimum height, H min. Um, and also getting a handle on the range of facet heights will lead to asymptotic formulas on the expected number of facets. And I will comment on this later, but um, indeed uh, getting a handle on the, the scaling for these facet heights as D goes to infinity is what will uh, give us this, these, those formulas. So in 
um, in fixed dimension, the asymptotic behavior of the polytope as of this polytope as n goes to infinity is well understood. Um, and I'll highlight a few um, asymptotic results that we and, um, aim to generalize to the case when uh, d goes to infinity. Uh, so first, for the expected number of facets, Kaluska, uh, Tail, and Zaporizets um, uh, obtain this precise asymptotic of the expected number uh, of facets um, growing, grows like n times this constant, uh, depending on the dimension. Uh, and then in fixed dimension, as n goes to infinity, this polytope will approach the unit ball. And so um, uh, we quote here a couple of results on the approximation rate uh, with respect to Hausdorff distance as n goes to infinity. So Glass, R, and Schneider showed um, that the, uh, the Hausdorff distance decays like log n over n to the two over d minus one. And Richardson, Boone, and Wu obtained uh, a large deviation um, bound. Both of these, um, both of these results are much more general um, for for polytopes um, uh, obtained by taking the convex hull of points on the boundary of a, of a more general convex set. But these uh, uh, results here are specific to the case of, of the unit ball. Um, another connection with uh, facet heights um, that has been studied in fixed dimension is um, the spherical Delaunay tessellation. So if we project our polytope to the unit sphere, um, we obtain a random spherical Delaunay tessellation. And if we let Xi1 to Xid be a facet of our polytope with height h, then the circumscribed cap um, to the sphere, uh, to this, um, spherical uh, Delaunay tessellation, um, the, the associated spherical uh, uh, Delaunay simplex will have geodesic radius given by arc sine of the square root of one minus the height squared, uh, the height of the facet squared. And so this was studied in a paper by Edels Brunner and Nikki Tango in 2018. And they studied the asymptotic behavior of the typical geodesic radius um, in fixed dimension as the number of points uh, n goes to infinity. And so, and with, with, with a bit of work, one can reformulate the results in terms of uh, facet heights. Um, and we can obtain this limiting behavior of the quantity one minus the typical height squared to the d minus one over two. So it's um, scaled by n times a constant depending on dimension. This converges in distribution to a gamma random variable with parameters d minus one. So um, we now ask what's the asymptotic behavior of the facets of our polytope when we allow d to go to infinity. So in fixed dimension, um, as n goes to infinity, uh, our polytope is approaching the unit ball. Um, but just to build some intuition about the range of possible behavior for polytopes in high dimensional space, consider the L1 ball uh, and RD. So it's a polytope with vertices on the unit ball and its facets um, are simplices. Is n equal two times D vertices. And the distance to its facets is one over square root of D. So if, you, if we're letting D go to infinity, the facet heights um, are approaching zero. So I'll to say that um, as you might expect, as dimension grows, the asymptotic behavior of our polytope depends greatly on how quickly n grows, the number of points n grows with dimension d. And our results will, will fall uh, broadly into three main regimes for n and d. Uh, one, first, the sub-exponential regime where log n uh, as little o of d. And in this regime, all of the facet heights are going to approach zero. Uh, second, in the exponential regime, um, where log n grows like alpha times d for some finite um, uh, alpha greater than zero. And in this regime, all of the facet heights are going to approach some constant that depends on alpha between zero and one. 
And third, the super exponential regime where log of n grows faster than dimension. And this is, in this case, we get the facet heights um, approaching one. So before going into um, some more details uh, about the results, um, I want to highlight um, some related work that I think is, is nice to compare, um, uh, compare with ours. So Kai, Fan, and Jiang um, studied the angles between random uh, unit vectors. Um, they had in mind applications in statistics and compressed sensing, um, for example, uh, looking at sort of random measurement matrices and, and, and testing for the case when you have low correlation between the column, column vectors. Um, and so they consider that this, uh, they considered um, N IID uniform random vectors on the unit sphere and, uh, and, the, and the pairwise angles between them. So let um, theta IJ be the angle between XI and XJ and define theta min to be the minimum of all of these angles and theta max to be the maximum of all these angles. And their results also broadly lie in the same three regimes that ours do. Um, the sub-exponential, exponential, and super-exponential. So um, in the sub-exponential case, when log n uh, grows slower than d, they show that all angles will converge to pi over 2 um, in probability uh, as dimension uh, goes to infinity. Um, and, so, and this is the regime um, in our setting where all the facets um, approach 0. Uh, the exponential case, they, uh, when log n grows like alpha times d, they show that theta min and theta max uh, converge in probability to um, constants depending on alpha. So, and this is the case where um, our facet heights approach constants between zero and one. And the super exponential case, when log n grows faster than d, um, this uh, their theta min conversion probability to zero and the theta max conversion probability to pi. So in this case, you get sort of the full range of angles. And um, in our setting, this is where facet heights uh, approach one. Sorry. Um, okay. Um, so here are some uh, sort of intuitive, uh, <laughs> since we cannot um, draw in high dimensions here, are some intuitive uh, uh, two dimensional representations of our random polytope um, in the three different regimes. So in the sub-exponential regime, again, we have um, all of our facet heights going to zero, which we show by uh, showing that the typical height, the minimum height and the maximum height all converge to, probability, converge to zero in probability. Um, the exponential regime, where the typical height, minimum height and maximum height all converge to some constant depending on alpha. And the super exponential regime, where the typical height, minimum height and maximum all converge to probability to one. But we can be more detailed about this. Um, so uh, in this re result, so in the, uh, first of all, in the sub-exponential regime, where the typical height is going to zero, you can say, well, how, uh, at what scale is it going to zero? Um, and to answer this question, we need to divide into uh, further <laughs> sub-regimes. Um, so first, if n minus d is on the order of square root of d, we actually obtain the central limit theorem. Um, the typical height uh, decreases on the order of one over d, and d times the typical height converges in distribution to a Gaussian. Um, if n minus d grows faster than square root of d, but still slower than d, our typical height um, uh, is of order uh, n over d, or n over d to the three, n minus d over d to the three halves. In the linear case, um, we get a typical height on the order of one over square root of d. And 
in the superlinear but still sub-exponential case, we get um, uh, typical height on the order of the square root of log n over d. Um, and so you can really uh, tune the scaling um, to be anything between like one over d and, and, and constant um, uh, depending on how, how fast you let n grow. And uh, so then we reach the exponential case where the typical height converges to a constant, we can write down explicitly as the square root of one minus e to the negative two alpha. Um, and then the super exponential case where our typical heights converge to one. And we show um, more specifically that the negative log of the quantity one minus uh, typical height squared, which um, that will converge to zero. So the negative log of this quantity um, grows like log n over d. And note that uh, for a facet with height h, uh, the square root of one minus h squared is the radius of the d minus one dimensional ball uh, obtained by intersecting its supporting hyperplane um, with the unit ball. And so you could uh, rewrite these um, asymptotic results in terms of that quantity. Now we turn to the interval containing all facet heights and see that h min and h max um, have a similar asymptotic behavior to the typical height. So all of these results are the same except for the first two uh, subregimes of the sub-exponential case. Um, if n minus d is sublinear, all we can say is that all the heights decay faster to zero than one over square root of d. Um, and in the linear case, all heights are of order one over square root of d, but um, we had a, a typical height uh, multiplied by square root of d approach to constant alpha. And here we just show, um, we show that uh, square root of d times any height um, will be contained with, within this interval depending on alpha uh, with probability approaching one. Um, so now I wanna take a bit closer look at this linear regime where I haven't written out these um, explicit constants but we can say a bit more. Um, so here when we have n minus d grows like alpha times d, um, the uh, results showed that in this regime, the heights of all the facets are on the order of one over square root of d. Um, the typical height multiplied by square root of d converges to um, a constant that is the value at which this function f alpha attains a maximum. And f alpha can be sh is a strictly concave function and has a unique maximum that occurs in the interval zero to infinity. So our alpha for any alpha will always be um, greater than zero. And then for the range of facets, um, the range uh, that we show um, is, the, is the range, uh, the interval in R that bounds um, the interval where this function g sub alpha, which is um, strictly concave, um, is greater than zero. And in general, our, uh, this lower bound RL doesn't have to be uh, positive, it can be negative. Um, and uh, so I also want to mention that it is in this regime where uh, Wendell's theorem on the probability that zero is contained in our polytope achieves its phase transition um, from, approaching, from going from zero to one. And recall that zero is in the polytope if um, all facets are positive. So it's in this regime where we see the shift from having negative facet heights to always having uh, positive facet heights. Okay, so um, we have an additional result on the typical height if we assume uh, an even stronger condition on n than just super exponential. Um, so first note that for a facet with height h, one minus h squared to the d minus one over two is proportional to the volume of the intersection uh, of the supporting hyperplane of this facet with the unit ball. Um, and now if we assume that, lo assume that log n grows faster, not only than and uh, d, but d log d, then the total variation distance between this um, uh, quantity uh, one minus the typical height squared to the d minus one over two um, times n times this constant uh, depending on dimension 
uh, this total variation distance will approach zero um, as n d go to infinity. So in particular, in the fixed dimensional case, we recover this result um, that was implied by the uh, Edels, Brunner, and Nikitenko paper. Um, and if d, if you, if d does still tend to infinity, um, then we obtain this uh, central limit theorem. So uh, to connect uh, again with sort of other uh, known asymptotic uh, results on this spherical polytope in um, high dimensions, we note um, uh, this volume threshold. Um, so uh, Pivarov uh, showed that the ratio of the expected volume of this polytope to the volume of the unit ball will uh, go to one if, um, if we are below this uh, super, super exponential uh, regime and go to one if we are above. So in particular, our, uh, this results on the convergence to a um, gamma random variable with parameter d minus one. Um, uh, we can we only obtain we were sort of for, formally in this regime where the 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 polytope is catching the volume of of the unit ball, um, and since I mentioned this result, I also wanted to mention a recent result by uh, Jabonet, Kabusko, and Turkey that um, where they uh, obtained sort of the precise shape of the phase transition um, at this scaling, and uh, I believe there is. Uh, a, vid uh, a video on this uh, um, semester program website. Um, you can watch about that, uh, those results. Um, okay, great. So now I just want to quickly comment um, on how we prove these, th uh, prove these asymptotic formulas. Um, and to compute the, the facet heights of our random polytope, I really want to recall, uh, well, first recall from uh, Professor uh, Kabushko's very nice lectures earlier this week on beta and beta prime polytopes, that the uniform distribution can be obtained by considering the beta distribution and letting beta approach negative one. So I would really refer um, you to his uh, really nice lectures to understand um, better um, some of the ideas and, and much more. Um, but I'm just going to quote here uh, the, the couple ingredients that we need to formulate uh, formulas for the probabilities that, that we're looking at. So uh, let x1 to xd be uniform random vectors on the sphere um, and the potential facet for our random polytope. Um, and uh, so let a be the affine hall and call h of a to sign distance from the origin. The square of this distance is known to have a beta distribution. And then we need to um, ask whether or not this, act this actually forms um, a facet of our random polytope. And so this will happen when all of the other points are on one side of A or the other, um, which we can determine by projecting all of the other points onto the one dimensional subspace orthogonal to A, and then making sure um, these projections all lie either below our uh, uh, distance or are all uh, above the distance. Um, and these projections also have a known uh, uh, distribution on the, um, on the interval zero to one. So putting all these ingredients together um, allows us to um, obtain a this formula for the probability um, that a d-tuple of uh, uniform random vectors is a facet with height in an in interval h1 to h2. So we'll denote this and we'll denote this uh, probability by um, i h1 h2. Um, note in particular the probability um, that the convex hull of x1 to xd is a facet is i negative one to one. And so we can write the, the distribution of a typical facet in terms of the integral and um, just sort of carefully choose our h1 and h2 uh, so that the probability that typical height um, uh, is outside of this interval goes to zero. Um, for the range of heights, 
um, we have the expected number, um, we consider the expected number of facets with height in some interval h1, h2. So this is n choose d, um, which is the number of uh, size d subsets in your set of n vectors, um, multiplied by the probability that um, this d, this the convex solid of this d tuple is a facet with height in h1, h2. Um, and so we'll denote this expectation by f h1, h2 and, and f negative one, one is the expected number of total facets. Um, so again, we, want, we need to carefully choose h1 and h2 here, depending on n and d, so that the expected number of um, facet heights less than h1 goes to zero, and the expected number of facet heights um, above h2 uh, also goes to zero, and then use these as bounds to show um, the probability that the h, um, the minimum height uh, is less than or equal to h1 goes to zero, and the maximum height um, is greater than h2 goes to zero. So uh, just to quickly give an idea, again, uh, to sort of carefully choose h1 and h2 here, um, at the right scale in order to be able to uh, uh, find the asymptotic behavior. Um, so in the sublinear case, we scale right and just uh, an application of the dominated convergence theorem gives the results. In the linear case, um, we scale by square root of d and we can approximate the integrand by something of the form e to the d times this function f alpha and an application of Laplace, Laplace's method um, gives us uh, all the asymptotic results. Um, in the superlinear case, uh, things get um, a little more complicated. So um, here we let h1 and h2 be um, such that we're letting one minus uh, hi squared to the d minus one over two go to zero now, since in, in the superlinear regime, our facet heights are either, you know, approaching constant, approaching one, or decaying slower than one over square root of d. And so this quantity will be going to to zero as d goes to infinity. And then the observation is that once we show the expected number of heights outside of this range goes to zero, h1 and h2 end up ha have the same asymptotic behavior. Um, and so um, uh, this gives us our, the, the same asymptotic behavior for our typical height and our min and, and max height. Okay. Um, so returning to our results and, and some implications of, of getting a handle on the asymptotic behavior uh, of this range of facet heights, um, we first can, can reformulate all the um, asymptotic results for h min in terms of the Hausdorff distance, which recall is one minus h min. So the Hausdorff distance between our random polytope and the unit ball will converge to one in the sub-exponential regime. Um, and we can obtain uh, some speeds at which it does this um, using our asymptotic, our more specific asymptotic results. Um, in the exponential case, the Hausdorff distance um, to, uh, between the polytope and the unit ball approaches this constant one minus the square root of one minus e to the negative two alpha. Um, and in the super exponential case, um, the how, this is where the Hausdorff distance the unit ball um, will approach zero. And um, we can say uh, that the negative log of, of the Hausdorff distance um, grows like log n over d. And lastly, um, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the talk, once we have the right scaling for these facets um, and uh, we, we, we can then look at the asymptotic of the expected number of total facets, which is gonna grow like the expected number of facets between this H1 and H2 that we've shown um, contain all of the, all the facets with high probability. Uh, and so here I've just listed, I listed all of the um, asymptotic formulas um, for each regime. And I will just um, note that the uh, asymptotic formula in fixed dimensions um, extends to this sort of super uh, 
super exponential regime where log n grows faster than d log d. Um, so in that case, we have, the, we have the same awesome path formula in the fixed dimensional case, but then even when um, we go below that, we, uh, we have this extra, extra term. Um, all right, that's all I have. Um, here are just uh, a list of uh, references for all of the papers that I uh, talked about um, or that I mentioned in the talk. Um, and thank you so much for your attention. <laughs>